All right. If everyone uh, could take their seats, or if you prefer to stand, you can stand. All right, we're, we're ready to get this portion of the hearing uh, started. All right, let's go on the record. Today is November 12, 2024. The time is 7.20 p.m. My name is Ken Sire. I am a judge with the Missouri Public Service Commission and I will preside over this portion of the hearing. The commission has set this time for a local public hearing to give members of the public a chance to comment about Missouri American Water Company's application for a general rate increase for water and sewer service which is commission file number WR-2024-0320. The commission regulates the rates charged by public utility companies in Missouri to ensure that those rates are just and reasonable. The commission also regulates the quality of service and safety of the operations of public utilities. The commission is composed of five commissioners. They are appointed by the governor and confirmed by the Senate. The Commission employs a staff of engineers, accountants, attorneys, financial analysts, and other specialists in the field of utility regulation. With me this evening is the Chair of the Commission, Kayla Hahn. Also joining us online is Commissioner Maida Coleman, Commissioner Jason Holzman, and Commissioner Glenn Kolkmeyer. The Commissioners have not made any decisions in this case and cannot answer any questions today because they have to remain impartial until after all the evidence is presented at the evidentiary hearing in this matter, which is scheduled to begin on February 27th, 2025. At this time, uh, Chair Hahn, would you like to make opening remarks? Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to UMSL's campus. I am Kayla Hahn, Chair of the Missouri Public Service Commission. And I am joined online with the fe my fellow commissioners, and I want to thank you on behalf of the entire commission for coming out this evening. I know you could be doing many, many different things with your time, spending time with your family, uh, or doing other tasks, but really appreciate you coming and participating, and we look forward to hearing your comments so that we can better inform our decision in this case. So again, thank you all for coming. Look forward to hearing from you. All right, thank you. Uh, there are attorneys here tonight representing the parties in this matter, and so for the sake of the record, would each of you identify yourselves and, to, and state which party you're representing, uh, beginning with Missouri American Water? Thank you. It's Tim Luft, Missouri American Water, and I provided Mr. Wallace with my information. All right. And for the commission staff? Thank you, Judge. It's Tracy Johnson for the staff of the Public Service Commission, and my information is also with the court reporter already. Thank you. And for the Office of the Public Counsel. John Kleiser, my information is with the court reporter. And are there any other attorneys here representing parties? Yes, sir. way we'll proceed with this portion of the hearing will be to uh, call the names that are on the sign-up list of people that uh, signed up to testify tonight and we'll call them in the order that you signed up so what I'd like to do is call your name and when I do if you'll step up to the microphone I'll place you under oath ask you to state your name and spell your name and then you can offer your comments uh, tonight because of the number of people that have signed up we're going to try to limit comments to three minutes uh, per person. Uh, and then once you're finished with your comments, if you will remain there at the microphone, I would appreciate it in case any of the commissioners or uh, the attorneys have questions for you. Okay. All right, so the first name on the list, and I do apologize ahead of time if I butcher some names tonight, but oh, I uh, Jim Moriarty. drop these. <laughs> All right, um, Mr. Moriarty, Moriarty, before you start testifying, I'd like to place you under oath, and you have your right hand raised for the sake of the record. 
Uh, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give tonight in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Thank you. And again, if you could state and spell your name. My name is Jim Moriarty. That's spelled M-O-R-I-A-R-T-Y. All right. I'm a customer. And I live in Warson Woods, and I'm here to testify tonight that this company should not get any increase until it provides what I think the commission called in the handouts adequate service and the public council called good service. And I don't think the company is providing either of these. And I want to point, first of all, to two documents. This is a document I printed off the website today and it talks about advanced metering infrastructure. And in two places they say it's gonna improve the customer experience and that's hogwash. Because last November, when I tried to get my water shut off, it took three crews to get my water shut off. The third crew actually replaced the curb shut off. In the process, they moved my meter from my ba basement to a meter pit in the front yard. And I expressed my concern about being able to read my meter and they said, oh, you can get all this information online. When I couldn't find the information online, I called the so-called customer service number. Um, let me tell you some of the responses I've got. I've been hung up so many times by the customer service, I think it's part of their training. Um, the first time, I, one of the times I called, they said I wanted to shut off the water, and they said, well, it'll be two weeks. And I said, that's not adequate, and they said, well, we'll refer it to the local office. And I, they wouldn't give me the number of the local office, and I never got a call from the local office. So two weeks later, they showed up, um, and they finally got the water shut off, and they moved my meter from my basement. Let me tell you what the experience is in trying to read a meter in a pit. You got to get virtually on your hands and knees. You got to remove the lid from the cover from the pit. Then you got to reach into a dark pit and lift the lid on the meter. And you may have to wipe off the, sc the screen just to, to see what it's reading. And you're going to do all this in the daytime, obviously, because it's a dark pit. You're not going to see anything at night unless you've got a flashlight. And you're going to do all this and it, while not dropping your glasses or your flashlight or whatever you got into the pit because you may never get it back. Um, the other thing it says on this thing is it, it says, enhances our ability to quickly detect and notify customers of leaks. That's more hogwash. I, I experienced in January this year, the last three days of January, I used almost three, over 3,000 gallons of water. Now, I was never notified by the company, and that's 10 times what my normal usage. Well, I figured it out, and I, it was a a faulty valve. I quickly replaced the valve. The manufacturer replaced it free of charge. And, and I think it was the third day I finally got it stopped. This document I printed out today. First of all, let me, let me tell you about this second document. Oh, it's a flyer that I got. It's dated October 17th. This was emailed to me by the water company. And it says, the AMI meters are high-tech water meters that allow, cu allow customers to track their up-to-the-hour water meter. Well, this thing I printed out this, today, this is the daily 30-day report and the 24-hour report. They never agree. The 24 hour never adds up to the 30 days. The 30 days has never got 30 days on it. I don't think it, in the year I've been checking this that I've ever seen a 30 day report with had 30 days. It's usually 28, 29. 
And the last day is always zero. And I know that's false. Mr. Moriarty, uh, you are bumping up against your time limit, so if you could kind of conclude your comments. Um, in my dealings with the customer service department, I've been told everything that it's that we can't answer your question is the responsibility of the meter department. But they don't have a number for the meter department, and they never call you. Other times they've told me, well, it's, it's web services. That's who's responsible for that. But they don't have a number. And the last time I went through this, I asked for a supervisor. And I asked her, what state are you in? And she wouldn't tell me. Because I, I've, from experience, I've got them in North Carolina. I've gotten them in New Jersey. Never a local person. Um, so the customer service doesn't exist. All right. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Kleiser. Mr. Mario, do you, over here. To your right, Mr. Kleiser. Um, you mentioned uh, two documents, and you appear to have several other in your hand. Would you like to have any of those documents offered to the record for this case? Yes, I um, would. You know, I'll just go ahead and move uh, to take uh, hearing exhibits. And for the sake of the record, can we just do it as, as one? Big exhibit. All his documents. Yeah. Uh, yes, that that'd be fine. If that's all right with you, Mr. Murray. Who do I provide them to? Uh, you can provide them to me. But my question is, is is that your only copy? Because yeah. I don't know that I have. I the can ability. make copies and provide them to anybody. If you would prefer not to, if all the parties. If sorry, sir. If you would prefer to keep the original copies, please feel free to. Uh, either send to the commission staff or the OPC a copy of the documents you referenced, and we will Can have you them share entered. them with all the parties? We will have them entered as uh, public comment records. That um, would be great. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Just one Mr. question. Mr. Were you here when I said there's people out front that can answer any question that you have right now if you need it? So right now out front, Mr. Moore, they will pull up your account and they can answer any question. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to ask him, but I don't understand why I can't get somebody on the telephone to answer the questions or call me back. And I don't like being hung up on it because I don't swear except at the auto attendant. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Moriarty. Thank you. Next on our list is Christine, Christina Kinsman, I'm going to say. Kinsman. Hello, right. my name is Christina Kinsman. The last name is K-U-N-T-Z-M-A-N. All right. And before you go any further, I'd like to place you under oath. Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give tonight in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, Low-income households depend on reliable and affordable water. Disruptions to household budgets threaten their jobs, education, and health. The proposed increases will have a disproportion disproportionate burden on especially black and brown families. Many of our member congregations provide direct assistance in the form of food and help with bill and rent payments. On a daily and weekly basis, they see the risk facing community members to sustain themselves even with the assistance. Across the traditions of our congregations, we affirm the values of considering the well-being of our neighbors as a measure of the health of our communities. We believe in increasing, not decreasing, the equity in our region and state. Since our congregations, members, and neighbors continue struggling with the impacts of lead pipes and no filter knowledge to deal with it, as well as the proposed rate increase, Metropolitan Congregations United does not support the current proposal for, rate in for the rate increase this fast, especially by American Water. Thank you. All right, thank you. And if you wouldn't mind uh, sticking around. Any questions from the commissioners? All right, thank you. All right, next on the list is Patricia Lewis. Me? Oh. 
All right. Ms. Lewis. I'm Patricia Lewis. Okay. And Ms. Lewis, um, you've got your right hand raised. I appreciate that. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give in this hearing tonight shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. And uh, I assume your last name is spelled uh, L-E-W-I-S. -E -E is that okay. correct? Well, let me start the show. Ms. Lewis, uh, am I correct that your name is spelled L-E-W-I-S? I'm deaf. Okay. I'm reading your lips. Okay. That's fine. This bag is full of all the horrible things that the water company has done to my house, my property, my street, my neighborhood. There has been three subcontractors come in the neighborhood, and all three of them would not restore what they tore up. Now we get a fourth one who wants total access to all of your pipes. What mess is this one going to make? Right now, with all of these problems, the water company owes me fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. And until they come through with it, their water is not going to come any farther. The senior citizens are getting a 3.2 cola raise. The water company doesn't even deserve a fraction of it. Thank you. All right. Uh, next on the list is Michelle Wilson Bernard. I'm be three minutes. <laughs> Ms. Wilson Bernard, would you raise your right hand, please? Mike? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Could you go ahead and state and spell your name, please? Michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, Wilson, W-I-L-S-O-N, Barnard, B-A-R-N-A-R-D. All right, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, hello. Um, I am a uh, community activist uh, in the 24-1 footprint. Uh, which includes uh, the Normandy area. And uh, I do thank you for hosting this uh, public hearing today. Um, I don't really have prepared comments, so if I start to ramble, and especially if I go over that five minutes, you know, please stop me, as I'm sure you will. Um, I really, um, I have a lot of complaints about utilities, but not Missouri American Water. Uh, one of the reasons I remain living in the state of Missouri is because of water and weather. Um, I am very pleased with the quality of Missouri American water. I've had water in places like Chicago when I was 19. I've never, upon returns, I've never ever drank their water before. It was very highly chlorinated. Missouri is known for excellent water, and I'm very pleased with the quality of water. And usually my biggest concerns about water are quality and safety. And I did have one question related to safety because with this new administration coming in, there has been talk about possibly eliminating the, floor, the fluoride in the water, which is a very much a concern of mine. Um, I hope that that's something that would not happen here. Um, if you have any thoughts on that or any comments, you know, please express them because, again, um, water is my go-to beverage. Um, 
And so uh, that was the main question I had was about the, the fluoride in the water. And do you think that that's something that uh, would ever uh, develop? And if that's something that you thought could happen, what measures do we as citizens uh, can take uh, to voice our opinion against that? Um, and again, I, I do thank you for uh, uh, coming uh, and hosting the meeting here. Um, I really had no um, specific comment about the increases because again, my focus is on quality and um, safety. I do not, I'm not looking for a well. I'm not looking to go to a country where they have to walk for miles to get water. So I thank you. Um, Ms. Bernard, um, in response, this is where government can be a little bit confusing uh, to average folks. Uh, the Public Service Commission doesn't necessarily regulate the level of fluoride in your water. That is regulated by our State Department of Natural Resources, which is our delegated agency of authority from the Environmental Protection Agency. And I know that's not intuitive, um, but I just wanted to provide clarification that we wouldn't have any knowledge of changing rules or regulation relating to fluoride um, at the, from the federal level. So thank you so much for your comments and your concern, and we can definitely take that into consideration moving forward. Thank you. All right, the next name on the list is Deborah DeCon. Is that correct? I'm gonna assume that is incorrect. And, and what is your last name? Deku, D-E capital C-O-U, and my, my first name is Deborah. Okay. D-E-B-R-A. Thank you, and you've got your right hand raised. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give uh, tonight in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right, go ahead. I'm basically here to use my voice to say that I am opposed to this rate hike uh, due to it being a monopoly, and to second Mr. Moriarty's comment about poor customer service. I had a water leak at my home I am new to Missouri, I moved here from New York. And I, so I didn't know many people and I had an extreme water leak in my house. Could not find the shut off valve. Had, I had to find somebody to come to help, a plumber. And in the process, I contacted Missouri American Water. And they told, I said, can someone please shut the water off from the street and they said, no, that's your responsibility. So I had to hire someone to come to my home and then find out that he didn't have the correct implement to go to the street and shut the water off for my house. I don't think that was appropriate. And we also are paying a service fee every month for this. So what is that service fee for? if you can't call the company that you are paying for services and get help. So that's basically my comment. All right, thank you, Mr. Koo. Um, next on the list is Martin Corwin. Mayor That's not, yeah, but, leave that alone. Leave it alone. I got you. Okay. All right. So Mark is Martin correct? I, I assume it's not. 
It is Martha. Martha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Was well, Corwin correct? That is. All right. 50-50. Um, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give tonight in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Corwin. Um, I just want to say that I am very opposed to this hike. It's not that there's a hike. It's the cost that they're actually proposing. I think it's exorbitant. I don't think there's been a lot of transparency that I'm aware of of exactly how that's going to be spent. Like a lot of people that attended this meeting tonight, I live in North County. Obviously, I'm not from these here parts originally, but I do call it home now and have for some time. And, um, and I'm really disappointed about this because one of the things I've noticed living in North County is that whenever they have all of this construction for the utilities, whether it's MSD or American Water or whatever, and it's certainly for the state, it seems like certain areas of St. Louis get all of that construction way before those in North County ever see it. And, you know, whether it's clean water, you know, some people, I agree with her, the lady that spoke earlier that said that the quality of the water is not the problem. I appreciate the fact that I like the water and that I think that it's appropriate. But I also don't feel like it's something I should pay exorbitant rates for or grovel and beg for because I find that to be a basic human right, whether a monopoly company agrees with that or not. So I'll leave that one alone. I want to just tell you something because I wasn't prepared for the meeting. I didn't know about it until 15 minutes before when my, when my bestie over there grabbed me around. And, but I will tell you how I communicate is through story. That's where my background is, where, where I come from. And so I'm not gonna to talk to you about why I feel like it's not appropriate, the amount that they're asking for. I feel like it's not appropriate because of the girl that lives next door to me. My husband and I, he's almost retired, I'm already retired. We've kind of settled in, we saved, we did okay. Am I happy with those increased payments, those billing cycles and stuff? I am absolutely not. And I also wanna point out that I know that my MSD bill is gonna reflect that increase because what goes in must come out. And those two bills are definitely tied together. So when he made that, so when he made that comment very cavalierly, if, I, if you don't mind me saying, he said, well, it's only gonna cost 60 cents a day, $18 a month, times 12 for a year. I took that personally because I felt like that showed a complete lack, a complete disconnect from what he wants and what the citizens of this, of this state want. Because that 60 cents is gonna be duplicated in that sewer bill. And so that's a lot more than what most people are thinking about right now. But the story I wanna tell you is about the girl that lives next door to me. Forget about me and my husband. She is 30 years old. She has worked for her entire adult life. She is a social worker who is working on her PhD while single-handedly raising a seven-year-old daughter. She lives next door to me. She has ring cameras on her door, but she can't afford to have the recording part of it. So when her house was broken into and her car was almost stolen and he tried to get into the house where the baby was, she was very upset and I said, well, now you got the record, right? She said, I can't afford it. My bills are so, so structured right now because I'm trying to be, that she's buying this house at 30 years old. And she said, I, every penny matters, every penny matters. And she said, when you go to these meetings, because we've been going to the ones for MSD, we're gonna to come to American Water and everything. She said, when you go to those meetings, cause I can't leave my daughter alone. She said, you make sure you tell them that there's a person who lives next door to you that cannot afford all of these tax hikes. These, 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 these I've gotta fix the aging infrastructure. We are aware of that, but we find it excessive. And I hope that you guys do too. All right. That's all. All right, thank you, Ms. Corwin. And I, and I neglected to ask you uh, to spell your name for the record. C-O-R-W-I-N, and Mark is my husband. I might have signed him by accident. Sorry. Okay, okay. And, <laughs> we, and how do you spell your first name? Martha, M-A-R-T-H-A. Okay. okay, just want to make sure. Can I have a quick question? Yes, Mr. Kleiser. Uh, I'm sorry, you testified that you didn't receive or wasn't aware of this LPH until about 15 minutes before? Yeah, because she came over and said, I need a ride. Did you receive a paper copy of the local public hearing handout? I don't think that I did. And also, I followed the ICAF. For those of you from Florissant, that's the I Care About Florissant. And we catch a lot of different notifications that way. I'm also a news junkie. I'm a reader. 
And so I'm really surprised that I didn't know about it. Um, but, you know, what, I do what, now. Question. Are you a, uh, do you receive paper bills or are you a paperless bill customer? Um, actually, that would be a Mark question. But he's going to get fired if he got that and didn't tell me about it because he knows I'm an <laughs> activist. <laughs> But I'm not, I'm not sure about that, but I would think that it would be in more than just one resource, something this important for that amount of money. Don't worry about it. Thank you very much. Sure. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Next on the list is Sharon Owens-Hare. Good evening. I'm Sharon Owens Hare. Okay. S H A R O N O W E N S hyphen H A R E. Okay. And would you raise your right hand, please? Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give tonight in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Thank you. Go ahead. Ma um, I actually have about three things. One, I'm going to start out with um, I live in Wellston. Forgive me but it's probably one of the worst neighborhoods in North County. But I have a leak that has been there from, I would say on and off for 10 years. And I've called the water company and I've called the sewer company. They did dig up uh, earlier this year, the 62 going into the 6300 block of Page. Um, <clears throat> it's Stephen Jones right in the intersection. And it's still leaking from up under the ground, out. It stopped for, I don't know, maybe a month and then it started all over again. It's back out there now. They've also dug up down the street from my house. I don't exactly know what they're doing down there because we thought they were gonna be down there for a week or two and they've been down there over a month. So I would like the leak taken care of. I have called, um, the city of Wellston and the water company, and I, I just got tired of it. The next thing is that um, I would like to find out, how can I phrase this without sounding rude? Um, the executives and the directors, whomever. Why can't you all take a pay cut if we gotta take a pay cut? I'm on a fixed income. And um, I broke my foot for the fourth time and now my back and my knees are messed up. So I would love to go get me another job. I'm retired, I'm 68. So I don't understand, and I'm not for this rate increase, because I'm not seeing what I should be seeing being done in Wellston. And they dug up my alley and took out my drain, um, what do you call it, the, uh, where your water leaks off your roof? The, uh, whatever that is. And it, it, they, they, they took it from one side of the house and put it to the other side while they dug up my alley. Didn't nobody ask me nothing. I went ahead and went along with it. And that was a couple of years ago. But they said that the rainwater can't go in with the sewer. I'm trying to figure out why did they just start to do that when it's been like that for like over 200 years? My house was built in 1920. And the last thing was that um, I'm good with the water. It, it tastes great. It's just that I'm not for this rate increase. When you're on a fixed income, you cannot afford to just keep jumping to everything that you all want to raise the prices on. Now, my husband's dead, my mother's dead, and I'm in the house by myself, but it's paid for but I've got other stuff that I've already had to crunch down. I don't have cable, I have regular TV. I don't have a cell phone, I don't have a regular phone in my house. I operate off of a cell phone. And I put my son out and very happy about it. 
So I don't have nobody to help me. And there's a lot of people out here that does not have anybody to help them. Women outlive men, if you didn't know. So that's it. All right. Um, all right. Thank you for your testimony. Next on the list is Chris uh, Sedlick. Premium service here. All right. Did I, did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes, you did. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mr. Sedlick, Sedlick, would you raise your right hand, please? Mm -hmm. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give tonight in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and the truth? I do. Could you go ahead and state and spell your name? Sure. It's uh, Christopher Sedlick, C-H-R-I-S-T-O-P-H-E-R-S-U-D-L-I-K. Go ahead. All right. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to say I've also had uh, issues with rates and metering in the past. Uh, when we switched to the meters at my previous address, we were facing uh, hundreds of dollars a month, like literally $300 payments for no leaks, no nothing, just ridiculous stuff, and it was horrible to work out. But uh, what I really came up here to talk about was uh, these three pages that I've printed off from, uh, from the American Water uh, Shareholders Annual Report. And these are from 2023, 2022, and 2021. They're the third page of the report. And they reference a value that all investors and rich people across this country care about a lot, uh, total shareholder return. Because we all know rich people don't make their money off of incomes, they don't make their money off of pay, they make it off of stocks increasing in value and their net worth increasing in value and making loans off of that to live off of. So what they really care about is their stock numbers increasing. So in 2021, I've got this report, and it says that from 2016 to 2021, their stock price increased from a levelized 100 to $285. Now, that's just their way of uh, putting it in here to say that the rates have increased by 185% over the course of five years. Now, that represents probably billions of dollars for a private corporation and for a load of rich people that did zero work to deserve it or to earn it. And it represents money out of all of these people's pockets, all of the people out of the city's pockets. It represents the old people in my neighborhood getting more poor every year and getting more miserable every year. And that's a huge number for an increase, too. But their next two reports are a lot less rosy. In, uh, in 2022, their five-year total return is down to 82%. And in 2023, it's down to 58%. And I mean, that's a huge return for rich people in any case, but it's a worrying decrease. And it's a worrying decrease that paints a picture of a trend. And a trend that things are only gonna get more expensive, rates are only gonna increase more, and that this is gonna become a worse and worse problem every year. We had a rate increase in, what, 2020, 2023? Those were both years that they were making huge gains for their rich investors, but not for the people here. Um, so like, I would like to say that you know, I really hope that we find a solution to this that isn't just giving a private corporation more money, that we try to find more collaborative solutions, that we try to figure out our infrastructure problems on a city and a statewide basis, that we try to do something about this besides just raising these people's rates forever, because this is not sustainable and it's not gonna work. Thank you. All right. All right. Mr. Yes, Mr. S Mr. Pleiser, go ahead. Do you have Sorry, well, once again, you referenced some documents did you want those documents entered into the record? Uh, they're literally just the third page of the shareholder reports, uh, but I'd be happy to pass them over. Uh, I'll move to make it an exhibit. All right. Thank you. No for further questions. For the record, no objection from staff on admitting those. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Hey, Mr. Mr. Love. No objection. Okay. All right, uh, next person on the list is Jeanette Mott Oxford. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Um, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give tonight in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. 
And uh, would you state and spell your name, please? It's uh, Jeanette, J-E-A-N-E-T-T-E, -E -E, Mott, M-O-T-T, -T, like the applesauce, Oxford, O-X-F-O-R-D, like the university or the shoe. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm here tonight as a, a lay leader at Epiphany United Church of Christ. We do a lot of uh, work with uh, people in our community that are uh, struggling to make it. Uh, for example, last Thursday night we had a community dinner welcoming anybody that would come, and then we did a service project for the crisis nursery that offers, offers respite services for um, parents and other adult caretakers of kids that are just need a break, uh, just want to take care of the kids for a brief amount of time. And so we're really familiar with a lot of folks who can't afford a 113% increase in their fixed monthly customer charge. That's a very steep uh, increase and customers can't control it by conserving because it's a fixed amount that doesn't have anything to do with the amount of water that, that they use. Um, I think that a 10.75% return on equity uh, uh, is a very high corporate profit rate. Uh, at a time when many households haven't seen their wages or retirement benefits keep up with that. Um, I just retired on October 18th, but last year I was working at Paraquad, uh, the Independent Living Center for St. Louis City and County, uh, and um, I had a very good um, you know, review on the work that I'd done after 40 years of public service uh, around public policy, and I got a 2% increase. But that was below uh, the rate of inflation. It's all that they could afford to, uh, uh, to, to pay, uh, given that the state of Missouri gave us some, some cuts, unfortunately, in the independent living budget last year. Um, and then I know that a lot of people on Social Security only got around 3%. So this 10.75% is exorbitant, in my opinion. Uh, and having this revenue stabilization mechanism uh, also harms customers for the sake of guaranteeing that very high uh, ROE. Um, Water is a basic human need, and, and human beings have to have it to be healthy. I have to have clean water, uh, safe for drinking, cooking, bathing, and cleaning, and any increase uh, in income for uh, Missouri American water must be accompanied by a robust customer assistance policy to prevent disconnection and to secure access to water. Uh, we might think this is only a few people that are gonna, gonna have trouble paying this amount of an increase, but really there are a whole lot of folks in Missouri that can't afford this. The, um, the Who Pays report from the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy that just came out last year showed that one out of five Missouri non-elderly households have an annual earning of less than $20,900 a year with the average income in that group is just $12,100 a month. You can understand if you're living on about $1,000 a month that you're gonna have real trouble paying the, the kind of increases are, that are in this. And then and the next 20% 20, uh, 20 the next quintile uh, makes less than $43,400 a year with an annual income of $31,100. So there's a whole lot of folks that are gonna really struggle with this and uh, we really think that this is too much. All right, um, and just to, uh, to verify for the record, when you first uh, started speaking, you referenced the, was it the Epiphany? I, I attend Epiphany United Church of Christ as a lay leader. I, I am not a customer of, of um, American, Missouri American Water, but some of our congregation are members. Of. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, um, and thank you for your testimony this evening. Sure, and if you would like a copy of this written report, I'd be glad to submit it to you for the record. Uh, is it just? It's what you it's just a memo to. yeah that's up to you really if i'll motion for it to be on the record okay thank you do i give Any, that to no objection no objection from staff all right, all right. All right, next on the list is Jill Green. Hello, my name is Jill Green. That's green with an E on the end. All right, uh, you've got your right hand, for the sake of the record, you've got your right hand raised. So do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give this evening in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And. Um, just to verify, it's Jill, J-I-L-L, -L, and correct. last name is Green, G-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E. Correct. All right, thank you. Okay. 
I had a, um, I, I do appreciate the water service that we do receive. I think it is great. However, it just keeps ringing in my head about this, the um, writing on the, we received this in the mail, uh, for the announcement for the public hearing and everything. And it states in here that uh, 250 miles of aging water and Excuse waste. Excuse me, Ms. Green, can I have you uh, just take a half a step over, there you go, and, okay. and speak a little more into the microphone. Okay, is that better? It is, okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. It says, um, the installation of approximately 250 miles of aging water and wastewater pipes. I know that the gentleman earlier said that somehow, some way, the water company handles some wastewater. But, okay, in what way does the water company handle wastewater? The gentleman right here, is he with the water company? Are you with the water company, sir? Can you answer that question? In what way does the water company handle waste water? Mr. Mr. Luft, if you can hit the microphone button there. As our president stated earlier in the question and answers, we have some areas of Missouri where we are the wastewater provider. We're not here in St. Louis County, but for example, in Arnold, Missouri, which is just south of here. So it's a Missouri American water and wastewater. We, we handle the wastewater there, but not the water. So it just depends where you are in the state. But here we're, in St. Louis County, we're generally just the water, except there is some far areas in the farthest part of West County in Wildwood area where MSD will not go. We happen to be there serving them wastewater. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then it says the charge, the change to the bill for the wastewater customers will vary depending on the service areas. So have you outlined some areas and different percentage percentages for different areas? Right. Uh, Miss Miss Green. Speak, yes. Speak. Uh, that may, if there are customer, and I assume there are Missouri American Water. Uh, personnel out in the lobby. Maybe those are questions that they could answer more efficiently. Hmm. Okay. But uh, because it, it, it they'll just have, they'll leans, have those figures. It leans toward, you know, certain areas that are already more disenfranchised being charged higher increase or percentage than the other more wealthy areas. That has been the case in the past. Okay. Yeah, they, I would assume they would have that. If they, and if they don't have that information tonight, that they could get that information to you. And, and who is that that I should uh, speak with? Uh, the gentleman here at, at the end of the second row is raising uh, his hand. Okay. And what's his name? Just in case. Rich. Rich. Okay. Mr. Rich. Okay. All right, okay. then. All right. Is there anything further you'd like to testify to? Mm -hmm. I'm opposed to the rate increase. Gotcha. I think it's too absorbent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Especially right. because it doesn't correlate with the increase of salaries for the upper management people. <laughs> okay. No, we just can't have both. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. <coughs> and next on the list is James Garner. Mr. Garner, would you raise your right hand? Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony given in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And My name is James, J-A-M-E-S, yeah. Garner, G-A-R-N-E-R. -E Thank you. Go ahead. And I'm, calling, I'm here to oppose the rate increase. One, because they just have the rate, we've had two rate increases in the last, what, three years. And also, according to the, um, the president of, of American Water, he said that the, the rate increase would, would help them acquire to acquire more property, more um, different companies, uh, uh, um, in different areas. So my and and my also my question, I have a question is, will all the area, the 14 states and 18 military bases that American Water services, will they all see rate increases as well to help them increase their profitability, or is it just the state of Missouri? And and, and the last thing is. I don't think it's fair because 
you're asking for the customers to give a rate increase, but your stockholders have not l l had a dividend loss in the last 10 years. So, so I think I think American American Waters um, stockholders and investors could take a loss if that's what they need to improve the capital the capital on the capital improvement projects. Okay, thank you, Mr. Garner. Are there any questions for Mr. Garner? All right, thank you for your right, testimony. You. All right, uh, next on the list is Atifia uh, Umanda. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, as I said earlier, I'm Judge Sire, and uh, you're raising your right hand. I appreciate that. Uh, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give tonight in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And um, before you testify, could you state and spell your name? Uh, it's Afia Umana, E-T-E-F-I-A-U-M-A-N-A. U-M-A. N-A. N-A? Okay. Yes, excuse me, let me turn this thing off. All right, before I start, I would like to ask, because I don't have visual cues, so I don't know if it's here, if he's still here. I think the president was here. Is he still here? I do not believe so. Oh, okay. Uh, well, the, the point I was going to make was I was going to ask him, and you all approved his salary, correct? The commission? You said that earlier today, correct? I'm assuming that, that um, he's probably making in between three and five hundred thousand dollars. So any increase in his um, water bill or any of the respective utilities that he pays may be negligible um, and inconsequential. Uh, he's not going to have to make a determination on whether or not to fill up on gas or cut his medication or uh, do any of the things that are um, a lot of the constituents will have to do. Um, one organization I represent is the Missouri Council for the Blind. And um, in the state of Missouri, you have um, about 90% unemployment rate for people who are visually impaired or blind. You have um, thousands of individuals that are on what's called blind pension, which is a fixed at $782 per month as their major source of income. So uh, this egregious, horrific expansion of price gouging um, uh, definitely has a detrimental impact on the life of uh, those individuals that do not have the six-figure incomes that most of the attorneys here have and the president of the um, uh, uh, Missouri American Water has. They don't have that kind of uh, 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 resources to turn a blind eye <laughs> um, uh, to uh, the increases of these bills. Now, there's an old saying that um, lack of preparation uh, on your part does not constitute an emergency on my part. And most of the individuals that are here that 40% increase, that $11 increase in the service is an emergency that we should not have to bear because of the greed of uh, this private company that is manipulating uh, and speaking goobly goop on what they were, their lack of preparation and of uh, doing some things, anticipating some things that, th that are needed or have, because this is not about customer services, it's not about infrastructure. Again, as it has been stated over and over and over again. There has not been a loss for this company at all. The shareholders get what they want all the time. The reality of the situation is this is another grift 
in the unholy alliance between the company and the Public Service Commission on uh, uh, screwing uh, the customers. That's it and that's all. There need to be other more sustainable ways in, in trying to uh, make sure that uh, we get quality service for this very important uh, utility as well as, um, uh, again, it, it, you know, 40% is just, it's just a little ridiculous and it's something that I vehemently oppose. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Umana. Next on the list is Cindy Meredith. So this is my first rodeo with this and I am not prepared. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Do you, um, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give tonight in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. And then can't, before you, before you get started, you're... Uh, Cynthia. I, I put Cynthia, but you could, it's Cynthia. C-Y-N-T-H-I-A. Meredith. M-E-R-E-D-I-T-H. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. I really hate babbling and I hate long stories, so I'm going to try to make this short. I'm not prepared because um, I was going to blow it off. And I thought, I can't do that. I've kept my mouth shut for too long on too many things when it comes to our government. Um, I was Googling, because I'm not prepared after I had a couple questions. I didn't know Ameri Missouri American Water fell under American Water Works. Well, your CEO makes $7.72 .7 million a year. She apparently has a tenure of only 2.92 years and um, that's ridiculous, okay? That's ridiculous. There's enough to go around, and like I shared, I'm not gonna tell my story about my experience with uh, so-called being told I have water leaks in my house when I, in fact I did not two times, um, and I fought and I was treated like poo-poo uh, from the other, this wasn't the customer service people, it was the other people that you have to call to get the schedule to test the water meet the new so-called smart meter, which, you know, I don't really like Googling things because it's not always right. Anyway, um, I'm just gonna cut to the chase here. We're in a recession we have been for four years. Our interest rates are sky high. People can't afford homes. People can barely afford groceries. I went to buy butter the other day and almost fell over because I really don't bake a lot. Four sticks of butter was almost five or six dollars. And I find it really interesting that every time that our country is struggling financially with the interest rates and the crazy greed and grifting as the gentleman just said, all these utility companies that are all monopolies want price hikes for your investors. I'm sorry to be rude, I don't mean to be disrespectful, you know what, I don't give a hoot about your investors. I care about being able to put food on my table, gas in my car, buy some clothing, and have a decent life since I've worked my entire adult life. So if your CEO is making $7.72 million, I can guarantee you that you all are probably one, 1 1.5, if not more, I'm assuming. I don't like to assume. But this stuff has got to stop, okay? It's got to stop. We're tired, we're fed up with it. I don't like to put words in other people's mouth, but I'm sure that's why these people are here. And it seems like every single time I've inquired about these, oh, I went on the record too. Um, you know, you all try to go paperless, okay? Well, when you're paperless and you're paying your bill through your bank, you don't really see all the little minutia nano letters about these things. I found out from Mike Moon, a senator who is not even in my district, he sends out, I highly recommend everyone get on it, uh, he sends out a weekly email about a lot of important things and this is how I find out about this rate increase. There's no signage out here anywhere, okay? It's like a, it's a scavenger hunt the way you wanted it. 
but I'm really shocked that not more people are here, but I'm shocked that um, this many people were here. The greed has got to stop. We can't take any more. Hopefully in the next four years are going to be uplifting and a lot better like they were four years ago. But we need your help to make sure that we can continue to thrive and get out of the hole that we've been under for the last four years. And the fact that your company has never suffered a loss, and I think you all have been around in Monopoly for 100 plus years in St. Louis County, it's just too much. Because you know we don't have a choice, and you have us by the B-A-L-L-S's. And I'm tired of it. And it would be nice to have people stand up and fight for us more. That's it. All right. Yes. Mr. Kleiser has a question for you. Uh, sorry, ma'am. When you described your uh, getting the information of the LPH for this, the local public hearing, do you receive a physical copy of a local public hearing notice uh, in the mail? No, not to my knowledge. And are you a wireless? Uh, do you do you receive paper bill copies, or are you an online or paperless bill? Actually, I still get the paper bills, but as I was sharing earlier. Um, They've become so convoluted and ridiculous that I don't really even read them. I look at the, my balance. And then I'm like, there's no way I spent this much money. I don't even have a dishwasher and I live by myself, like I mentioned earlier in my question. Um, because I had water spikes at midnight, 1.30 in the morning, and the gentleman outside with your company, he put my address in there to try to find out where it was spiking at those hours, but he couldn't find it. I find that really interesting that maybe it just disappeared. But he was able to see why it was so high. He claims it's from my watering my grass. Well, my yard's not that big, but anyway. Did I answer your question? You did very much. Thank you, Maram. All right. And uh, next name on the list is Naomi Bay. Hi. Um, before you get started, I don't. Do we want to adjust her microphone? Okay. Oh, thank you. For yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Um, uh, you've got your right hand raised. Uh, thank you. Uh, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give in this hearing tonight shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. And could you go ahead and state and spell your name, please? Naomi. N a o m i. B A Y E V. Okay. Uh, what I want to talk about is a few months ago, my bills came. It was like 1700 And that was like shocking to me because I'm a single mom and I live with my mom. And my grandma, she's, she's in a wheelchair because she got stroke. And I called them, but the customer service was very rude to me. And I was like, okay, look, I'm a grown up woman, and if you're gonna talk to me like this, I'm gonna flip off on you, cause I don't live with you. Can you switch me over with somebody else? And every one of them was just like, oh, that's your bill, that's your bill. Uh, and then I was like, okay, can I talk to somebody who can really understand what I'm saying right now? Because 1700 no, that's a no-no. My car note is 540, and you can tell me 1700 for a bill. A woman, no, that's a no-no. And the other lady came, she said, oh, do you have leakage, or uh, do you have a pool, or you holding water, are you building something? I'm like, no. We're renting, I'm not building a house, or." a mall or something that I'm going to be using or gathering a water like that. So my mom called the landlord and he checked. He's like, no leakage here, but I'm going to still put a new pipe in case they still say some. So I called him. I said, the landlord said no leakage, but he still put a new pipe. They said, okay, we're going to take 700 out. And I'm like, why am I going to get the money from to pay the other one? Two weeks after I was at work, my mama called me and she's like, the water gone. I'm like, what do you mean no water? I got, a, I got my son. 
He is 10 years old. He used to suffer from seizure, but he was on medication, but it took him off. And I'm like, I can't do this with no water in the house with my grandma, she's in a wheelchair and she wearing dapper that she need water. Why would they cut my water off? And then when I call her, so you gotta pay your bill. I'm like, that's not my bill. That's from somebody else or whatever y'all did because the landlord didn't see no water leakage, nothing. And they turn the water off. We have, I have to go to a family members to get water me and my mama put water in our car, in bucket, in pots, in anything we can because I need water for my baby and I need water to take a shower to go to work to make money because I'm a single mom. I don't get no Medicaid and I don't know how other people get some stuff that other people done. And I don't get none of the assistance. So with my car note and everything was up, I mean, this is the point where sometimes people commit suicide and they wonder why. Because I was losing my mind. Like, if I don't get money to pay this bill, how am I going to live with my grandma with no water or even me? And I was losing my mind. Like, when I go to work and I keep telling I got to go home. I need to go home now. And they're like, what's going on? What's going on now? I mean, you not like this. What's going on? And it's too much. It's too much. How that bill went up, I don't know. I pay it, but it hurt that I pay something that I didn't use to pay money for something like that. So if somebody's stealing or whatever it is, it's not right. And your customer service, when people call them, I'm sorry for my accent. I'm an African. Even though I grew up here, but I'm a stay. I'm an African. When people call them, they're very rude. They don't know how to talk to you. They just say anything they want to say just to get off the phone. And I have some of them hanging up, and I will call back and say, uh, who am I speaking to? Because I remember name. And then when they call that name, I'm like, I just talked to you, and you hang up. They're very rude. So please, me paying that money, and it took me back. I'm not going to lie right here. It took me back. Because I have to put hold on my card note to pay that money. And you know how it is when you pay your card note and you don't pay, they can repossess your car. And it, I was, it drives me crazy. And I don't know what to do. I could have done something crazy to myself. Like, I can't do this no more. This is not life for me. It wasn't like this before. So please, whatever it is. It need to stop. And I don't know what they're going to do about that money that I pay for nothing, that I didn't use no water to be 1700 I was just showing one of the lady right here my phone, uh, from my phone, the bill, and she's like, what? And I, I show it to her. I'm like, you see, 1700 is not pocket change. We work. Some of us can pay for $16 per hour, sometimes 15 And it's not much money for us because when you go to Walmart, just egg costs $6. And it wasn't like that before. You go buy bread, it's almost $4. And we got kids. I don't care if it's one or two, mom or dad, we go through a whole lot. So the rich people make more money and they live better life than us. And it's not fair. Miss, Miss Bay. Ms. Bay. Thank you, Ms. Bay, for sharing your story. Um, at ever, were you aware at any point in time that the commission has a call center that can help with customer complaints relating to bills? Uh, when I, when they told me about my bills were well, 1,700, a lady told me, uh, we can give you somebody number that can help you pay your bill, or whatever it is. When they gave me the number, the lady told me, oh, it's gonna take a month. My water already off. It's, a, it's gonna take a month, 30 days, and she said, I can give you the guarantee of even 30 days because we got lakes of people that are in front of you, so the water is already off. 
and I have to, excuse me, hold on, and I have to call my grandma, doctor, that was the crazy one. The lady said, okay, we're going to send this paper to the doctor's office. Do you know that it took two days, me and my mama on the phone, and they keep lying. Oh, we already sent the paper to the doctor, and my mama have to go to the doctor's office sitting right there, and the doctor look and say, nothing here. Oh, we already sent the doctor say, okay, you know what? Y'all ain't going to be lying to me. I gave you my fast number two, and I'm right here in my office with Mary Matari right here in the wheelchair, and I'm checking, y'all didn't send no paper. And that's how the doctor told them they need to pour that water on now because that's a sick lady who wearing dapper, and she need to be clean up. And that's how after two days they put that water on. And I still paying that bill because I can't afford it to say I'm gonna pay 700 or $800 right on this spot. I'm not rich. I just, we have staff here that can help you with uh, resolving even if the bill is paid already, looking into your uh, issue. So maybe after this is over, we could connect you with, with them to help you. Okay, that would be great. Thanks. All right, thank you, Ms. Bay. All right, Ms. Bay's is name was the last one on the list. So, um, if you did not testify tonight or if you're watching online and you would like to make comments um, or if anyone who uh, testified here tonight, I'm sorry, Ms. Kleiser. Okay. Oh, sure. Is there anyone else who did not sign up tonight who would like to testify tonight? Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Leslie Fogarty, L-E-S-L-I-E-F-O-G-A-R-T-Y. -E -E Could you hold on for a second? And since you were not on the list, let me get that, get that down. And spell that name again, last name again. L -E F, F as in Frank, O-G-A-R-T-Y. All right, Ms. Fogarty, uh, would you raise your right hand to be sworn in, please? Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give tonight in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. I would just like to say that I do oppose this uh, increase for several reasons. The first, um, I think it was very deceiving on this notice of the possible increase that was going to be incurred. It said about $1,800 or $18 a month, when in fact, they don't even mention the service charge goes from $10 to $21. So I think that was very deceptive. And um, the other thing, uh, I know a lot of people have testified about the quality of the drinking water, and I'm going to disagree with that. There is a, a website called EWG, it's Environmental Working Group. They do some, uh, you can put in your zip code. They give you the quality of the water in your zip code. And for my zip code, uh, it says that the tap, the tap water has over 16 contaminants that exceed EWG health guidelines and a total of 39 contaminants, many cancer causing. Uh, I actually put in a reverse osmosis system or sink thing so that I can drink my water. I will not drink the water here. We were spending a lot of money on bottled water. That got expensive. Um, and the legal limits for contaminants in tap water have not been updated in almost 20 years. So uh, another thing that I disagree with is the fluoride. You know, how much money are they, are you, they spending on putting fluoride in the water? Um, there are lots of studies that say fluoride is very detrimental 
to uh, your health. I do have some stuff printed out. Uh, I got rid of fluoride in my toothpaste, have had the best dental appointments I've ever had. So uh, that could be a cost savings of getting rid of that. So that's all I have. All right. All right, thank you for your testimony. Yes, sir. <laughs> sir, what's your name, I like please? That. Lamont Shannon. Could you? L a m o n t. S h a. N n o n. All right. Mr. Shannon, would you uh, raise your right hand, please? Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give tonight in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Shannon. I just want to point out an observation. Uh, I'm not sure if this is something that's prolific throughout your, um, your community of work, but in the 24-1 area, which is where I live, I've noticed something about your operation that um, I've seen your workers come out to service an area where they may have four or five trucks with people in them and only two people working. And I was wondering, is, is that uh, normal procedure? And if so, isn't that, uh, I mean, not cost efficient? And so I just wanted to point that out that I have observed that on more than one occasion. And, and you said that was in what area? The 24-1, that's this area here, the Normandy, Jennings, Wellston, all these little areas around here. Mm -hmm. And so I just thought that was like, uh, you know, not an efficient way to run an operation. Okay, Mr. Kleiser has a question for you. Uh, very briefly, when you say you, for the sake of the record, you are referring to Missouri American Water Company, the utility? Yes. Thank you, that was my only question. Mm -hmm. okay. all, right. all right, thank you, Mr. Shannon. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. My name's Kathy Dolson, K-A-T-H-Y, D-O-L-S-O-N. Ms. Tolson, would you raise your right hand, please? Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. All right, thank you. Go ahead. I just want to go on the record to say I'm strongly opposed to this rate increase. While I'm not in dire straits like many of the people that um, came up and spoke, it's just a ridiculous increase when they have CEOs that make the money they do and the investors make buku bucks on their investments. It's just not right that it's a monopoly and we have no choice in our water service. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to testify who is not on the list? All right. Um, as I started to say earlier, if you do have comments that you would like to add, if, if something comes to your mind later on, um, if you go to the commission's website, that is psc.mo.gov, on that home page there is a link on the right side of the page that says submit comments. If you click on that link, you can add your comments there, and I would just ask that you reference this case number, which is WR 2024. WR-2024-0320. And uh, Chair Hong, would you like to make closing remarks? Happy to, thank you, Judge. Um, I just wanna take a second to tell you all how appreciative I am that you came out tonight on this uh, rather getting late evening. I feel like I, I've learned a lot. I know the commissioners listening here on online have learned a lot. I've even been tickled at times by husbands getting fired. I'm not gonna go tell Mark. Um, I just, I know you could choose 
to do other things with your time, and I know that your comments tonight will help us make a better decision, and I appreciate that so much. And for many of you, you may have offered comments about issues that you've experienced. I would encourage you to reach out to our staff that are here tonight. Uh, they work with customers and citizens all the time. Mike in the back just raised his hand. Uh, help you work through those issues if you haven't met, if your resolution hasn't met your satisfaction yet. So please do that. Again, thank you for coming and look forward to seeing you again in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Hahn. And if there's nothing further, we, uh, the hearing is now adjourned and we're off the record.